right, what up, Internet? This is the Pop Geek Podcast, episode number 10. I am Matt the Noob, my man Superfan Eric over here, and I'm on the ones and twos. And we're going to we're gonna do it a little bit different this time. We're probably going to keep our subjects pretty low, but uh, <laughs> we're going to kick it off with a little bit of news. Um, the Sony VR unit has been fully named now, and I've heard a price point. Now, I haven't heard an actual number, yeah. but it's being reported it's going to be priced as a console, and it's called Sony VR now. I hate when they do this. Like, they have really cool code names, like yeah. Morpheus. Like, that was awesome. And then it's like, oh, yeah, PlayStation VR. It's like, right. really? Yeah. You could have come up with something to call and, it. I and mean, then, yeah, like, wait till the Tokyo Game Show <laughs> to make it not cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Morpheus. Exactly. You know, like, why don't they call it the Neo? Yeah. That would be pretty awesome. Go. Yeah, just stick with the Matrix <laughs> theme. Yeah, or... That would be compared to Neo Geo. Oh, uh, that yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, yeah. Now, you were saying this is going to be priced as a console. That right. It's a whole new uh, pricing market. Right. Now, and, and that's what I, I'm wondering. like, Because this reminds me of back in the day when I was one of the numbskulls who bought the 32X or the Sega CD <laughs> or one of those. those. Did you have both of them? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. And yeah, Well, I had to play Doom, and I had to play the 32-bit because that was like blowing my mind which, at the time. Which, man. Uh, Genesis did you have, though? Did you have like the original one with the volume and the... Or did you have, like, the second generation? I must add second generation. I don't think I... It wasn't the small one. It wasn't was the it tiny side-by-side side Sega CD, or was it yes. the stacked Sega CD? No, it was side-by-side. Side. Okay, so it was, the, it was the second one. Then. Yeah, yeah. That's the one I had. Okay. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was like, this seems like an accessory that's going to cost as much as a console. So if you're if you're doing the math on this, this is like $1,000 sitting in your living room, which, again, so is your television. But right. But mm-hmm. this... If if it's as much as a PlayStation, we're talking in the in the five to six hundred dollar range, probably brand yeah. new. Yeah. Oh yeah. Would be uh, probably accurate. And you're the they're talking about rollout in early 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, ten games. That's it so far. Right, and this is what that's what scares me is like, what what else can you do, and is the content going to be there, and is the interest going to be there? Because mm-hmm. we were at the GameStop Expo. Yeah. We saw that all the VR was there. There was no lines for VR. Mm-hmm. There was most of the time empty units and hanging lenses <laughs> and nobody playing on it. Now, that could be a content-based thing. There's no specific games where you're like, oh, yeah, I want to play the VR, blah, you yeah, know, whatever game. Well, I demoed some VR stuff at NAB. I think I mentioned it before. Like, it, it's a cool concept, yeah. but I just, the resolution wasn't great. And mm-hmm. I just, you know, I think the technology is that we have could make it a lot better, but they just aren't doing it. Yeah. Well, and that from, from a storytelling standpoint, I can see it a little bit. I know yeah. the story guys are jacked about it because they're like, oh, the whole world is now, you know, writable and attainable and you can touch and interact, but also you're just somewhat limited. This isn't full VR. This isn't kind of what uh, the Oculus Rift is supposed to be, which is you're in a unit and you walk around. Mm-hmm. Like you're still in your chair wearing goggles or whatever or yeah, so you in, still, in some cases a samsung s6 against your eyes but. yeah you still got to be on some kind of rail system to, to move your character or yeah. in a stationary position that is like a hot air balloon that floats around the city or something right well or you're controlling your head yeah but you're still going to have to move your body in some sort of way yeah. probably with a controller um some of the stuff they showed from tokyo in the in the video i saw on ign is kind of uh, the PlayStation, uh, what the hell is that little shaker thing they have? Oh, the move? The move. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing some of that, you know, and it's like, that's. I guess that's kind of cool. You could probably do fighting games or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but then now you're adding another accessory, the PlayStation yeah. Move, to that price tag, right. which is going to jump it up to like another fifth, like to $1,500. Right, and it just point. it just reminds me of those old units yeah. where they would upgrade something and tell you how great it is, and no one buys it, mm-hmm. and then you're the guy sitting at home with like three games that are playable. Well, look what happened with Microsoft and the Kinect. I mean, they revolution yeah. they they praised themselves on this new technology. Oh my God, it's motion capture. You can sense your depth of field. You can play all these cool games, all that. Yeah, yeah there was like one or two games. Dance Dance Center was a hit, which yeah. I loved. But then, yeah, they came out with version 2.0. Nobody wanted it. Nobody bought it. And yeah. it's a hundred fifty dollar uh, peripheral that no one has. Right. Yeah, it's. I, I think. I I don't know it, what you need is you got to have that killer app yep is what it is it's that's how it is for anything like any console that was ever sold anyway 
And no, nobody would have adapted to Nintendo if Mario wasn't just the oh, coolest yeah. thing anybody had seen. You know, because we had we had the small build up with Atari, and everybody was like super into Atari. I was a ColecoVision person, <laughs> and I remember playing ColecoVision, and then that got you hooked. But man, when Mario came out, that just like blew everything away because that was the killer app. But this, um, yeah, it reminds me of Sega CD a little bit because it had like one good game mm-hmm. that everybody loved. Sewer Shark. I don't think it was, <laughs> was that was Sewer Shark. Night Night Trap was the one that got all the attention because it got banned. Oh right. Yeah, which I love that game. It used to scare <laughs> the hell out of me because it was like live action. It was like watching someone's closed circuit television, and then just a guy is suddenly like <laughs> creeping down the hallway trying to get these girls. And you, if you didn't set your trap, he gets them. Right. And he like you know hooks them in the neck and drills their neck, which I was, I was like that is fucking morbid. Now they did say they're gonna come out with ten games. They have ten games yeah. like slated for this release, but they never said like how far apart they're going to be, yeah. how close together. It's going to be like 10 games in the first two years. It's yeah. going to be 10 games in 10 years. Right. I mean, you don't know. Yeah, and it's it, that's a hard investment point. Yes. You could go hardcore fanboys, and they're probably going to go for it. You oh, get yeah. your hardcore PS guys who are going to be like, you know what, I want to be the early adapter on this stuff. But something this big with this kind of investment, I, I, I'm out. Yeah. There's no way. Like even if Microsoft and I'm because I'm an Xbox owner, if they had an equivalent system, no. Well, I'm waiting at least generation two and I want to see content. But what I would what I want to see too is, is content I know. Yeah. Give me Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. That would be kind of cool. Give me Mirror's Edge would be great. Oh, that'd be if fantastic. Because you, you know, you're already in that mm-hmm. first person mode. You know, stuff like that. Some of the stuff they showed. Is, is real basic. I, I don't know. They're, they don't have anything together yet. But it was like someone on a beach handing you drinks. <laughs> I, I mean, I that's fun. That, yeah. Good, I, I need a game. cocktail simulator. Yeah. Like, you <laughs> is, know. It gonna, is it going to like simulate my drunkenness? Yeah. Yeah. You start shifting around. You get drunk goggles. <laughs> you know. Yeah, there you go. So you, you get fat chicks start looking hot. You know, it's like... <laughs> Maybe you use the PlayStation moves to do like a bartender simulator where they teach you how to uh, bartend. You're like shaking cocktails. Shaking cocktails. <laughs> that would be the weirdest like set of something. Although I thought I, I want to say I saw something. Somebody is selling a farm simulator that's like ultra realistic. Like yeah. you're literally like, driving to town to buy feed and stuff like wow. that. <laughs> Although I will say it would be pretty cool to have the VR and the PlayStation move and you're like fighting Darth Vader like in the arcade yes. system. Yes. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. But until that comes out and it's one to one motion, too. yeah. Yeah. You're it's not gonna work. Yeah. And with I all mean, these other technologies too, like um Oculus Rift coming out with yeah. their controllers and it's all a one enclosed system. You don't need to plug into sure. something else. Like that's the way people are gonna go for, I think, or I would go for if I was yeah. if I was interested in VR. Right. Because I don't want to have to wear my helmet, get my Xbox or PlayStation and then right. all of the controller accessories too. Right. Just too much. That's another thing too. Uh, the the uh, what I've heard, especially about the Oculus, uh, Oculus Rift, <laughs> is they're not doing just gaming. It's right. going to be some sort of entertainment experience. Like they want to shoot almost um, Google Earth style the Louvre in Paris. That's so you cool. can put that on and walk around and see what it's really like there, and that'd be kind of cool. Especially, I mean, spend a thousand bucks on that. You could just fly there. <laughs> but at the same time like that's an interesting addition like mm-hmm. gaming would be one thing but playstation sounds like they're going straight gaming with this and again you're gonna have to have a killer app oh yeah and i got this funny feeling that it's gonna be 10 apps and nine of them suck and there's gonna be one that's kind of good yep and i just I, I i don't know if i could do the investment and like i said what we saw at gamestop was i don't know if the interest is there yeah i didn't see it at all yeah maybe it's different in tokyo because that's where they're they're on that's true yeah, they are a japanese there. company mm-hmm. and gaming is way different you know there because there's games over there that are huge that couldn't survive here at all you know and that whole that whole thing and like yeah Maybe eating crazy octopus and things like that. <laughs> it's anything like that Thanksgiving episode of American Dad where they go to New Mexico. Yeah. He's, he's got like this mansion like with this virtual gaming room. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm all about having the holodeck. Like yeah, once, oh, once yeah. we get the holodeck, I'll make that investment. But wouldn't it be weird if you have a random holodeck room in your house? <laughs> <laughs> You're just running around in your underpants like, <laughs> you know, fighting bad guys. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now... Now we get into it. Now to get fully dorky here for a while because <laughs> Destiny is taking over everyone's life, or at least 
Eric's especially. Yeah, um, my, my wife kind of hates me right now. Yeah. <laughs> this whole week's been really bad. Well, you, you did a, a two-hour live stream uh, uh, Tuesday the night it came out. At 2 a.m., right yeah. when the Taken King got released. So in case you guys don't know, Destiny came out you know, a year ago. Now the new DLC for it just came out called The Taken King, which yeah. adds even more expensive in, in world to it. It changes the whole game around, which is really fun. It makes me re-engaged into the whole world because it was getting kind of stale after a year sure but yeah i released this week on the 2 a.m so i live streamed for two hours just trying to get, I mean, I was grind the main through. one talking to you yeah. the whole time. I was like, <laughs> i'm at work because uh, i work all night so yeah i'm just like watching his live stream it's like, I'm just... leaving like nasty comments like... yeah yeah <laughs> i mean if, if only twitch had dick pics <laughs> like yeah <laughs> Yeah, I should have trash talked you. Yeah, that would have been great. Like, why is this guy so mean to me? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I I've downloaded it now, um, and I started playing. I'm a like, you know, I my name is Matt the Noob for a reason. Like, I you know, I barely know what the hell I'm doing. I'm a level eight Titan, which everyone's like, "Why'd you pick Titan? Titan is stupid." And I'm like, "Shut up! I, I like guns and punching people." And um, that's per- particularly what I'm really good at is punching people. Which is a great part of, of that mm-hmm. that game. Like it just it really helps you out because I'm an idiot. And I will <laughs> run directly into people and then I'm like they're in my guns clicking. I'm like that and just run away. <laughs> like I'm like club punching people is what I'm doing. <laughs> so anyway, like um, you're talking about how expansive the universe has become. Oh yeah, this is already really daunting for me as a as a new player. Oh well, yeah, because not only do you have Typical, uh, uh, they call it Vanilla Destiny, yeah. plus the ex- first expansion, which was um, the Dark Below. Then you yep. have expansion two, the House of Wolves. And now you have this new huge expansion called the Taken King. So yep. you have four expan- four games for which you're playing sure. all at the same and time. I've spent hours on it already. Yeah. And I'm at level eight. <laughs> That's got to be tough. Yeah. What are you? Uh, level 40, but my light level is 290. Okay. Yeah. My light level is like 38. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So like, and that's what's, it's it's an incredibly immersive game. Like this is like, it's um I can comp- it's comparable to a Dungeons and Dragons to oh, yeah. to a role playing game, except for it has this awesome action element to it. And I love the flow of the action. I still on occasion will try to hit the buttons the way Halo is, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. you know you get used to your uh, the way Destiny is, and it's just like I just I I get into the world and I just want to do my mission, yep. and it's not. That's simple all the time. Yeah, because Destiny is an old, uh, I guess it's kind of a kind of a first person MMO. So you're always interacting yeah. with random people, and you're in an and open dude, world. Like when you, you are not ready for that. Yeah. Like I like I'm used to Halo. Mm-hmm. I'm alone, running around in my world, killing people. Well, I play GTA. Like. Yeah, and you, you got to be used to that. Daily, and yeah. you know, the open world thing, playing with other people that are just doing their own thing. I'm pretty yeah. used to it, so. I know, Destiny kind of came naturally, but yeah, um, I still haven't gotten the Taken King, but I, I will. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, we're basically at the same level. Like, you, you played the demo, and you're at seven, I'm at yeah. eight. So, like, we're basically in the same thing. Mm-hmm. And then, like, but yeah, the first time someone comes bombing overhead. <laughs> With and the their, sparrow. The sparrow, <laughs> and you're like, what the, what the fuck is that guy? <laughs> like, you know, or like, or I'm I'm trying to figure out my, my little mission. And then an event starts right on top of you. Yep. And all of a sudden there's just a shit storm of people <laughs> killing each other around you. And I'm just like, I gotta get the hell out of here. And like, but that's what's what's interesting about it. Yeah. I can do that. Yep. I can run away. Oh, and there's, that's there's, okay. Yeah, there's plenty of times where I'm I start a mission to go and do this particular objective. Yeah. But then when we get into the open worldness of it, a mm-hmm. uh, public event starts. I'm like, oh, I'll take the time, do this public event really quick, and then I'll continue on my mission because I'm still in my strike. Okay, yeah, that was that was a question I had. Like I don't f- know if I could take part in it. Oh yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I know I could shoot people. You know, I'm well, well, well versed in that. Want any part of it? I mean, right? You, know, you could you just try, bypass you got all it. these enemies coming at you. I got no beef with you. Come on, <laughs> whoa, buddy, whoa. <laughs> Well, this and, is his fight. <laughs> right. well, and he the, started it. <laughs> the, the first time that happens to you in the game, where they they actually make you play multiplayer, mm-hmm. is um, the the devil's, devil's lair. lair. Mm-hmm. And so I'm I'm coming in, and it loads up two people, and like yeah. I didn't know this was gonna happen. They're like waiting for people to join. I'm like, with like computer people, like <laughs> these are real people, right? No, that's real people. Yep. And we we start doing the mission, and. What was interesting for me is I, I knew what Taken guys look like. 
Yeah. Because I've seen your footage, I've seen everybody you know online who's posting all the crazy Destiny footage, and all of a sudden Taken players started to show up. <laughs> And I'm like, this isn't right. Like, I'm I'm lowly shitty guy. Like, why am I? These are the DLC guys. Like, I'm yeah. supposed to get to when I'm good. But no, they, they've started popping in on lower levels, which I thought was, I mean, that's really interesting that they thought to backwards kind of engineer that this little game, you know, mm-hmm. whisper is going to start coming into old older vanilla uh, Destiny gameplay. Well, that's where, I, that's where I was talking about how it's just an open world. Yeah. And it's only until you get to the dark zones in your mission where you're actually secluded from everybody else and you're right. just playing your mission at your level with your two friends uh-huh. or fire teammates. Right. Yeah, so that's it's very interesting. Like I said, you can partake if you want to. Mm-hmm. They're going to be really higher level than you are, yeah. so you probably won't be able to do anything. Right. <laughs> so it's best your best bet is just to run at this point. Right. Well, you can always piss them off. You could do that yeah. too. Yeah, get them aggro and they start chasing you, so the other guys can shoot them. That's true. <laughs> I, I do. I do like that. That's aspect too. Is like, um, especially as a low level as I am, mm-hmm. they're, they're kind of dumb. The bad guys. <laughs> like, there's a couple times where they're like standing out in the open, <laughs> and you're like pointing right at them, and then you go, and then they move. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, oh, I'm sure that gets worse later. And and we oh, talked yeah. about this too, like killing a witch. Oh, the, way, or the yeah. wizard. I'm they're, sorry. No, they're called wizards. I call them witches all the time. Oh. So. I'm like, I hate it. It takes forever. And I'm just like 200 shots into this yep. guy. And then finally he goes down. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but like some of the stuff I wanted to ask you about, like uh, we'll do a little bit of a one-on-one here. Like, yeah, go for it. I have lots of knowledge. Explain <laughs> Crucible guy okay. to me. Because he's got missions. Mm-hmm. And again, I, we'll, we'll get into bounties too. I have no clue what I'm doing. All I know is I'm supposed to talk to Purple Head guy. <laughs> Who has missions for Titans? That's yeah. that's my main thing. And then I talked to the speaker, who I've I've talked to, and then lost once when I was like <laughs> the last part of the mission says talk to the speaker, and I'm like, all right, where's where is he? <laughs> and I'm like running around the North Tower and I can't find him, mm-hmm. and he's like out, he's out by the little device, whatever the fuck that thing is, observatory, the or observatory. Yeah. And I yeah I spent twenty minutes swearing at my computer because <laughs> I couldn't find the speaker. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. So get, uh, tell me, what is the Crucible thing? So Crucible is strictly the multiplayer where it's player versus player. You're right. in an arena. So deathmatch? Pretty much deathmatch, okay. yeah. They have different modes like 6v6, 3v3. They have these two new uh, modes called Rift and uh, Mayhem, which are awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, that was part of the DLC, right? Yeah, it's part of the new Tekken DLC. Rift is cool because you actually have a spark that generates and charges up in the middle of the map. And on opposite ends of your bases are these um, rifts. And okay. so when the char- when the spark is charged, everyone's convening towards that spark to collect it. Once you've collected it, you can run around and still shoot and everything, but you're like sparkly. Oh. And you're supposed to take that spark energy to the other team's rift and like slam dunk it. And then they all explode. Oh, and really? then you get like 5,000 points. It's like really cool. Capture the flag type of thing. Yeah. Well, I keep pre- ca- kind of capture the flag, but more like assault with Halo where you like carry the bomb to the base and drop it. Yeah. But this one's cool because you just run at the rift and he's automatically slams dunk. Yeah. If you go in backwards, you do like a backwards flip dunk and you get more points and style points. <laughs> but it's... So it's like- NBA Jam. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> just like that, just rah, boom, that's, just explosion. That's another He's funny on thing. Fire. <laughs> yeah. So that was that's really another cool. thing that should be ported to the to the phones. NBA oh, Jam. Oh yeah. I got it. Do they have NBA, NBA Jam? Phone, yeah. Oh man, because I want the old school shit too. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> the old school. One Dennis Rodman. Oh yeah. Oh Clinton. shoot. Oh, that's George awesome. Clinton. I'll have to look into <laughs> that. That's right, George Clinton. I remember the code for that. Yeah. P-Funk. P-Funk. Yeah. I think it was P-Funk. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, so, with Crucible, though, yeah. everything is balanced. So a level 6 player can play with a level 40 player. All okay. the gear is still balanced as far as damage goes, sure. but the stats are completely different. So if you have a guy who has better gear with... Uh, he shoots you in the head, he gets his grenade back or something. Okay. And you don't have that, he'll have a better opportunity because he can shoot yeah. you in the head and throw your grenade, he's done. And that, he that's again, it. this game, for like flat-out playability, mm-hmm. love it. You know? Oh, yeah. I, everyone's played first-person shooters. You already know how to do it. But there's that weird leveling up stuff that I just, I it, it takes me a minute. Like, you need to sit in that inventory screen oh, yeah. and level things up for a while sometimes. Because, mm-hmm. like, yeah, the, the regeneration things, like, it doesn't always do that. You earn that, and mm-hmm. then you can regenerate your grenade or whatever it is faster if you kill someone, if you do whatever. Yeah, and that's why uh, there's three types of gear. There's the uncommon green 
weapons or gear. Yeah. The blue rares and the purple legendaries. That's why legendary gear is so sought after is because they have these awesome perks right. that you can that are a passive that'll help your character as you go through the missions or in Crucible. Mm -hmm. You know, I have one perk that um, if I get a kill in Crucible, it's called Grenadier. It boosts my grenade and melee recharge ability. Oh, cool. So it, I get my grenade and melee faster, which is awesome in Crucible because I'm constantly throwing grenades and punching. Right. <laughs> so uh, The other thing is... Uh, God, what was I going to say? Yeah, the... the the little level up stuff in, oh, exotics. Mm -hmm. What are exotics? So exotics are yellow pieces of gear that are very, very, very rare to find. And you can only get them off of drops or on okay. the Ingrams with Zer when he comes every Friday and Saturday. Okay. And they are supposed to be like the best of the best of weapons. So they have really cool abilities like the new AR auto rifle. Uh -huh. I mean, the new auto rifle called the ZHAL. So I say Halo. Uh -huh. Zalo uh, Supercell. Is it an auto rifle that shoots... Um, projectiles that do chain lightning to enemies oh. so you can be hitting people in the head with the end, uh, with the gun but it chains lightning bolts to the other opposing enemies <laughs> right next to them that's cool yeah it's really fun and it looks awesome yeah but what's cool what's interesting about exotics is you can only equip one weapon or one piece of armor at a time oh so you can't be all exotic out okay so it really makes you choose or right, do i want to go with more defense do you want to go with more attack do i like oh. this this perk better than this other perk like is stuff different things you, like i said you spend sure. a lot of time in the inventory just to choose your loadout and i, I learned that the hard way well i, I knew it was going to be part of the game because mm -hmm. i kept getting way too many weapons yeah. and i'm like all right there's going to be a point where i'm going to pick the wrong thing and start some mission or something mm -hmm. like that i know you can change during the mission but like uh i was doing the mission with that that weird uh tank bug the thing. walker yeah yeah and like all i could think about is like i just i don't have the weapon i need yeah to take this thing out now as soon as i i ended that mission and did something else i leveled up and got like a new gun i'm like mm -hmm. man i'm going to go fight that thing now cuz now <laughs> i got the thing i want i could kill this thing with yep. you know not only that but then you got to worry about so uh, shields every yeah. character or every enemy has different shields you have yeah. solar shields void shields and arc shields and so before the Taken King came out, my loadout, because you have nine slots for every piece yeah. of gear, I had one of each uh, soul elemental damage primary. I have one each uh, elemental shotgun and sniper oh. equipped. I had a rocket launcher and a, and a machine gun of each yeah. kind of m m thing. So whenever an enemy would pop up with a certain type of shield, I can just quickly hide somewhere, go to my switch inventory, your... switch my guns, take them out, and then it would yeah. be a lot easier. That, that's interesting because... I, I have I have a hard time with that in terms of, like I said, real easy. Everyone knows how to do a shooter, but the learning curve starts to go mm -hmm. up when you're not just killing bad guys. When, like, all of the things you just said, there's no book for this game. Not no. when you buy it as downloadable content. It, it might have it, I guess, if you get the solid uh, I'm not disc sure if they even it, have help guides anymore but it's almost all wiki now it's the same thing with minecraft like oh, if you yeah. want to know anything about minecraft you pull up the wiki mm -hmm. like there's really watch YouTube. or watch youtube <laughs> those videos are everywhere yeah there's people just i don't know what the hell they're doing in <laughs> minecraft man like some oh, wild man, shit yeah <laughs> so far i need i mean, I need to get on that bandwagon i actually have some pretty funny ones yeah like i built a little train and put it, my guy in it and then like a spider and a cow got in with me and we're just shooting back and forth <laughs> it's was, it was a pretty awesome video so I, I got i got that i'll post that sometime <laughs> but anyway um i wanted to ask you about um the the actual visual mode of the game i saw somebody do a mission completely with swords Oh, yeah. Are you in third person yes. when you have swords, but not you don't ever get first person with swords? No, not right, from what they've question, had. Yeah, yeah. What, there's a, there's one mission called the Sword of Crota that you'll get into when you do the Dark Below expansion uh -huh. stuff. Um, we have to go collect the Sword of Crota and then kill the night the the princes of Crota. Okay. And yeah, you pick up the sword and you go in third person. You just swing it around, slam it down. It's actually a lot of fun to play with. Cool. Um, and now with the Taken King DLC, you actually can get your own sword that you can carry around as a heavy weapon. Oh, nice. And so instead of a rocket launcher or a machine gun, you can switch to that. You can switch to a sword, which I got, which is so it's, it's a void purple sword. It looks like a lightsaber, which is pretty oh, awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah, it does a massive amount of damage. It's awesome. Uh, real quick, while while we're doing one on one, the game is is so big. Can you give me like a synopsis? 
story wise <laughs> i i got i know what the taken king is about yeah and i think everyone does because if you watch the commercials they say you killed his son right he's coming for you but like can, can you kind of synopsis yeah, i can kind of do that yeah I mean, the game is big it, and is I know it, has, it had two different dlcs or whatever yeah and so the, basically it draws down to that the world was coming to an end right. uh, but after this golden era of technology from when this big orb came to our Right, the, planet, traveler. the traveler yeah. it brought upon this golden age era and then after that the darkness came which was like the hives and the thrall and um the cabals and all that mm-hmm. they came and kind of almost made uh, the human race extinct except right. for this one small city where the traveler was able to rest on top and that's where the protected rest of human humanization right, that's where is. the tower is yeah. Where, yeah and so then the ghost is sent out he's from the, the ghost is part of the traveler mm-hmm. goes out resurrects us as guardians to help fight back the darkness okay. and so you go through the first vanilla destiny doing that um and bringing the traveler back to life and then in the dark below is when or i mean yeah the dark below is when crota arrives he's the son of oryx Mm-hmm. bring on more destruction more chaos trying to take over the world like everybody all right. villains like to do all bad guys yeah all bad guys like to do right. so then you go and kill all his enemies and his lieutenants and his princes and then you end up fighting him in the Tark Blow raid mm-hmm. um, and destroy him then House of Wolves comes out and that's the fallen um, protagonist that's where those come from? yeah okay. so you have Skulls who's like a rogue um, they call him Kells so he's like a leader of a faction of, a leader of a house of fallen okay so his is the house of wolves okay he's a rogue agent trying to take over the world and you're there to stop him so you pretty much go through his missions you capture him and then he gets sent to prison where the prison of elders comes into play and now you can go into prison of elders and kill him over and over and over and over for loot <laughs> which, is, that, which is what you have to do yeah but it's super difficult like he's the hardest level of prisoner of elders there's like level 28 32 34 and then 35 he's level 35 oh okay. so it's really difficult to get through so that was the top end yeah right? until taking king until taking king came out so now the king oryx is here to enact revenge because you killed his son have you beat crota it? i did i played oh, through shit. the whole mission of the taking king missions yeah. played it loved it it is way different than what vanilla destiny was in the past yeah. in terms of storytelling and like gameplay it it really, like I said, re-energized uh, me into this game. Mm-hmm. Like, the cutscenes alone were just fantastic. And Nathan Fillion as Kate Six <laughs> just steals the show. Yeah. He is fantastic. I'm so glad to let it, to see them let him go that wild is, with is this killing guy. it with video games. Right? He's in Halo now. Yeah. He's got this game. It's like, he's everywhere. He's That's... got so much geek cred now. Yeah, no kidding. Well, not like he did it before with Firefly. Right, but... with Firefly, which is the <laughs> ultimate like underground geek show that never made it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I beat the Taken King stuff, then I started doing all these other missions. I still have tons of quests to do on my own. Okay. But I've been doing a so lot of... does that get into... Now, bounties and raids. Yes. Like, I don't really know what they are either. So, so bounties are your typical things you want to do every day because they're daily are you arresting people or are you killing people you're killing people okay yeah well it's called bounties because sometimes they're like oh go kill this particular person or it's uh, like there's kill there's no such thing as due process <laughs> yeah yeah it's for judge dread <laughs> right <Yeah>. exactly <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah some bounties will require you to go kill a specific target or kill so many of these targets or punch 30 people without dying oh nice you know once you get to a higher level that's pretty easy just go to a patrol area just pop 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 uh-huh. done um, but those are really awesome to level up your character because each bounty is like 2500 experience points oh, wow. and if you just and you can hold up to 16 now so you can stack them mm-hmm. so if you just do everyday log on collect, collect them all do them as you go. The next day, collect more. Do them as you go. Oh, okay. And then once you complete them, just uh, turn them in from the screen, and you boost up your rep and all your gear that's equipped too. Oh, okay. So you want to start doing that, doing bounties yeah. every day. Okay. But not only that, but you have a daily Crucible playlist where you can just jump in there, play one game of Crucible. It's always randomized each day. Uh-huh. So it kind of gets you used to playing different modes. Okay. But at the end of the Crucible, win or lose, you get 15 marks, oh. which is awesome. And the marks is the new... Those are your money, your currency, right? Yeah, it's a new currency to buy gear from the from the vendors and stuff. And then there's a daily heroic mission now that pops up every day that also gives you 15 marks. But you need 240 recommended light to do that, which oh, is pretty geez, tough. Right. And that's a story mission that has a heroic element to it, so it's much harder than okay. your typical story mission now one thing i wanted to get into and i i talked to you about this a little bit before this is an expensive game mm-hmm. you know i didn't buy even the full collector's version of it but i i bought what is it 60 70 dollars well uh 
I'll say well, something. Yeah. It was expensive for me. Yeah. It was cheap for you guys. Well, yeah. Because <laughs> I spent. We bought both. I bought. I bought the original, which was eighty bucks. Like I'm in right. the two expansions. Then I bought the forty dollar Taken King expansion, yeah. and I bought the twenty dollar collector edition <laughs> upgrade. So I'm on this what. Uh, Hundred and twenty dollars worth of game, hundred and forty dollars worth of game. Yeah. You only spent what sixty for yours. Yeah. <laughs> no, still like that is still. But my point, my point is, if your internet's out, oh, or yeah. if the server is down, you can't play this nope. game. Nope. This game does not exist in the hard drive of your your uh, Xbox. Well, it all the material is there, but the access right. isn't because you have to be connected to the Destiny servers to be part of the world because it's. Right. All immersive and random people going around it. Yeah, there's no now, offline. No, I'm just I'm just amazed by that. That's yeah. like when we talk it's a huge ballsy move mm-hmm. to do something like that. Because I I'm running into it a little bit with my phone. Where like just goofy shit. Like it could be an Angry Birds game or, or something equivalent to that. It has to connect to its little server, otherwise you can't really play the game. Yeah. And it's that's really annoying, especially on an app for a phone. Like, hey, I want to give this to my kid. Mm-hmm. Maybe I don't want my 4G running up the whole damn time while it's talking back and forth to the server and probably sharing my photos or whatever the hell else. <laughs> but it asks for access to everything in your computer. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's just like, hey, you want to play this game where you're a little knight and you kill stuff? Yeah, we want your pictures. You know, like, <laughs> we want to be able to post to Facebook as you. So, but like that, that's a crazy thing. The ubiquity of the internet is great, but it's not constant. Nope. We had the server went down uh, at least locally. I don't know if it was everywhere. What, do you know if it was everywhere? Uh, I want to say it was everywhere. And even this past week, the that des- was, it was Friday, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, were trying to play together. Yeah, and you, you were like, "Hey, don't worry about it. The server's down." Yeah, it was something on, and that's the thing too. It's like you have both the Destiny servers who can who, that can go down periodically for maintenance or like a hack or something sure and you also have xbox live servers that service that can go down right, too so you got fail. two different variables there yeah. plus your home internet so it's like there's all these variables right. that can potentially uh, kick you off yeah and that was a big issue in the vanilla destiny like people couldn't get connected yeah. xbox live was having trouble they had those hackers that were ddosing it it's like right. really guys i don't know if you heard about that one on christmas well, i just i love that there is a whole lore of Destiny Year One players. Who oh like, yeah, you guys don't know. <laughs> we went through the dark times of Destiny. <laughs> through the snow, fifteen miles right. uphill, then back. Barefoot. Barefoot. Yeah. Barefoot. <laughs> Nights coming out of the woods now. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah. I mean, like you guys. I, I need to send you guys a video to it, and I'll probably link yeah. it in the description. But yeah, this is a really cool video I saw on YouTube that outlined what Year One players will know that new players yeah. won't, and it's like. Man, I forgot about the loot cave. Man, I forgot about grinding through the walker for the first time, not knowing how to kill it. Yeah. You know, I forgot about the, my first raid, not knowing what the hell I was doing, you know? <laughs> and spending 12 hours on killing Crota alone, yeah. let alone raiding the whole game. It's like, Ugh. yeah, so much pain. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a, I am amazed at the depth that this game has. Yeah. Like, the... Um, we're not the only ones doing this. Like I've listened to other podcasts where they just weird out about Destiny for like an hour. Oh yeah, because it's it's just that deep, and you can get into so much customization and so much craziness. That, um, but yeah, I'm glad that we just did this. We'll get this out of the way. We'll try not to bore you guys more with Destiny stuff. Although probably if you're watching this, you're probably playing Destiny. Like I say, it's a knows. fantastic game. Buy the new DLC, The Taken King. It's yeah. a fantastic story. It really, like I said, changes the game around, gets right. you back into it. It's awesome. And speaking of plugs, we have our first plug. Yes, we do. <laughs> Adam, if you want to go for it. Yeah, uh, Holly's Cup of Coffee Bar over on uh, Blue Diamond and Cimarron. Awesome chai latte. Yeah. If you're ever in Vegas... Hollies. <laughs> we want to get free coffee. So <laughs> we we should just so you guys know we shoot this thing at eight o'clock in the morning and me and Adam work all night. So like we come in from work and the only thing keeping us going is coffee. So yeah. and I, I'm up I'm, I'm up till three in the morning rating. So yeah, he here. was up all night and uh, but yeah we don't we don't need sympathy from you guys. But uh, thank you so much for watching. This has been Pop Geek number ten. Hope you enjoyed. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the show, but we'd like to hear from you. So please leave a comment below and tell us something you'd like to see on an upcoming show or your thoughts and feelings. Or you can tell us that we suck. Maybe don't do that, because we're a little fragile.